Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and start. <clears throat> and um, I thought we would start with um, a meditation on loving kindness. And so this meditation on loving kindness, um, we use some visualization and um, a little bit of analysis, but it's gonna start by getting a posture that feels stable. And sitting in a way that um, you can sit upright without being supported without relying too much on the chair. And so just take a minute and scan through the body, allowing any physical tension to release and relax. Relaxing the head and face. Relaxing the neck and shoulders. Relaxing down both arms. Coming back to the neck, relaxing down the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way down to your seat. And coming back to the neck, now relax through the throat and down through your internal organs. Imagine everything becoming relaxed, settling into its natural position. Nothing clenched, nothing tight. Lungs emptying, lungs filling. The stomach not held in. And all the way down through your hips, through your legs all the way through to your feet. Being present with your body in order to release tension within the body. And then set a motivation that we do this session in order to develop and expand our own mind so that we can have more happiness for ourselves and others.
and shift your focus to the breath. And just be with your breath. Nothing extra. Distractions come and go, but you don't pay attention to them. Just rest with steadiness on awareness of the breath. And as the mind begins to settle, we gently introduce analysis. And so start by visualizing on your left side, seated next to you, is your own mother. Whether she's alive or dead, whether you had a good relationship with her or not, just take a moment to imagine your mother seated next to you on your left or your main mother figure. See her there in your mind's eye. Imagine her face, the sort of colors and clothes that she wears or wore. You can imagine her at any age that seems like the most strong form or most present form of her personality. And then just think about the different hopes and fears, the different struggles and celebrations, the things that your mother may have thought about or thinks about. 
just picture what might be the common contents of her mind. Using your memories and your imagination. And you can think about what was wonderful about your relationship with her and what was difficult about your relationship with her. And now with the wisdom of hindsight, with the wisdom of being an adult, think she was motivated like me, just wanting happiness, not wanting suffering. And all of her skillful or unskillful behaviors came from that basic place of just wanting happiness and contentment some sort of peace of mind, avoiding suffering and sadness, mental distress or pain. That's what motivated her, just as that is what motivates me. And like her, I'm not always accurate in achieving my own happiness or being skillful about it. And so try to feel the sameness between you. The details are different. The history is different. But underneath all of it, that very basic human need, happiness and contentment, avoidance of suffering and pain. and think that she was likely at her best for herself and at her best for others when she was happy and well. When she was destructive or unskillful, it was when she was unwell, suffering. And so think wherever she is in the world, wherever she is out of the world, if she's passed, whatever form the mother has taken, may she be well, may she be happy. Imagine sending her loving kindness that takes the form of a warm golden light at your heart center. The warm golden light fills you up and then radiates out to your left where she is seated, filling her up as well, bringing her peace wherever she is. Imagine her features relaxing, her body posture relaxing. 
a gentle smile coming to her face. May you be well. May you be happy. And now shift your focus to the right side of your body. And imagine seated next to you on your right side is your father or your father figure, whether he's living or dead, whether you have a good relationship with him or not, imagine him seated there next to you. The sort of clothes and colors that he wears or wore. The age at which his personality was most obvious and dominant. And as you think of your father, also think about the types of hopes and fears that he might have commonly had. The sort of train of thought he likely has or had. The things that made him happy, the things that made him worried, just bring a general impression of the common moods of your father, the common thoughts he likely has or had. And then you can bring in the things that are joyful and the things that are difficult about your dynamic. The sort of history between you, good and bad. Just highlights, the main themes. And now with the wisdom of hindsight, with the awareness of an adult, think objectively that this person who I call my father was motivated like me, just wanting happiness, contentment, peace of mind, wanting to avoid suffering, stress and worries. Just like me, sometimes knows what to do or knew what to do and sometimes didn't. 
was sometimes skillful, sometimes unskillful. But everything was coming from that basic place, that human place, just wanting happiness, not wanting suffering. Just like me. Even if what he called happiness was different than what I would call it, even if what he called suffering is different than how I would name it. Still there is that sameness. Only difference is the details. And think when he was at his best was usually when he was happy and content, mentally and physically healthy, helped bring out the best in him for his own sake and for the sake of others. When he hurt himself or hurt others, it was coming from a place of pain of confusion, of suffering. And so wish him freedom from suffering and happiness. May you be well, may you be happy, wherever you are, in this world or the next. Imagine that loving kindness takes the form of warm golden light at your heart, fills you up, and then radiates out to your right side, filling your father completely, bringing him peace wherever he is. His facial features relaxing, his body posture relaxing. As you flood him with light. May you be well, may you be happy. A gentle smile comes to his face. And then you shift your focus to the space behind you. And imagine that seated behind you, back to back, is your closest friend who you are not related to, maybe your spouse or your mentor or your best friend, but the person who you are closest to that you're not related to. Imagine this dear one behind you, seated there, whether they're alive or dead, just imagine them present in the age where their personality and features were most obvious and dominant. The sort of clothes and colors that they like to wear. Like a photograph from a moment in time that comes back to life.
And as you think of this dear one, think about the sort of struggles that you know that they go through or went through. Think about their struggles and difficulties, as well as their joys. the things that delight them, the things that worry them. Just a general impression of the key themes that seem to run through their life. And then you can bring in your specific dynamic between the two of you, the things that are wonderful between you, the things that are difficult between you. Knowing them as you do, you know that anything problematic in their behavior is coming from mistaken ideas and suffering, stresses. And you know that the positive qualities and wonderful features of this dear one are fed by happiness, increased by contentment, just like yours. whether you agree or disagree with the conclusions they come to in their life. You understand the drives at their depths because they're yours. Only the details are different. And so we wish for them to be at their happiest and most content, their most wise and functional, to be free of their struggles and pain. And so think to your dear one, may you be well, may you be happy. and loving kindness taking the form of warm golden light at your heart center, filling you up. And then you send the warm golden light behind you to your dear one, filling them up as well, bringing them peace.
May you be well. May you be happy, my dear one. Your face and body relaxing. A gentle smile coming to their face. And then shift your focus to the space in front of you. And in the space in front of you, seated there, facing you, is your enemy. You might not call them enemy, but someone who has harmed you, or harmed someone you love, or harmed something that you value. Someone whose face you would rather not see. Someone whose presence you wish was never in your life. So imagine one of the difficult people in your life, whether they're still alive or not, seated in the space in front of you, facing you. If it feels better and safer, you can place them at some distance. But still try to see their face. The age that you think of them most strongly. The clothes and colors that they wear. The expression on their face that is most common. Try to see this person that you don't want to see. And then without falling into the drama of the story, without falling into the emotion or pain. Still try to remember what is this person? Who is this person? What sort of thoughts and actions are common to them? Using my memory, using my imagination, I think of them and what life might be like for them. The different struggles and confusions, the different successes and aspects of clarity. Try to think of a whole person there in the space in front of you, not just simply the aspects that are problematic or harmful.
And as you think about this difficult person, think also about the drives underneath all the skillful and unskillful actions. Think about what drives this person using your imagination, but using your life experience as well. Life experience that knows bad behavior comes from suffering and comes from ignorance. It's not as if that's true for everyone else and not this difficult person. It's identically true. Bad behavior comes from suffering, comes from ignorance. Positive aspects are fed by joy, support, wisdom. Just like for me, so too this difficult person is motivated. And there's no need to jump over or dismiss the pain you might feel in your dynamic or the aversion and annoyance you feel when you see their face. But decide not to let that dictate the amount of loving kindness you send. And so come back to your heart at your center, heart chakra, warm golden light again, filling you up completely. Loving kindness in this form of light becomes like a protection that doesn't fear connections, that doesn't hoard or avoid. And again, you become so full of the loving kindness in the aspect of golden light that you can send it out, straight out in front of you to the person who is so difficult, filling them up, bringing them peace wherever they are. Think that you say to them, may you be well, may you be happy. The deep happiness of connecting to your inner nature as opposed to the superficial happiness you might find from doing the wrong thing of satisfying the afflictions You wish them the deep happiness, the deep relief from suffering. And you send this goodwill towards them, flooding them with light. Their face relaxes, their body posture relaxes. A calm smile comes to their face. And so think of these four people at your left, your mother, At your right, your father. Behind you, 
your dear one, in front of you, the difficult one. And imagine the loving kindness at your heart center goes out evenly to all four, in all four directions, golden light. Not more for some or less to others because they are all identical in wanting happiness and not wanting suffering, the same as you. And what's more, you won't run out of loving kindness. There's no need to quarant to prevent it from going out. There's no need to protect it. Because you will never run out. And think that these four people represent everyone in your life. They become representatives. And so as you send light to your left, to your mother, remember it also goes out even further to all of your female relatives, sisters and aunts, nieces and granddaughters, cousins, Golden light going out to your left, to all of your female relatives, living or dead, good relationship or not, springing them all peace. You can see some of their faces individually and also just have a general impression of all of them there. May you be well and happy. And over to the right, there is your father. And also there is all of your male relatives, living and dead, those you had good relationships with and not. And you send the loving kindness evenly over to them, flooding the right side, your father, your grandfathers, your brothers, uncles, nephews and cousins, grandsons. May you all be well and happy. And straight out behind you to your dear one, and also to all of your dear ones, your close friends. Flooding the space behind you. Bringing all of your dear friends peace. Seeing some of their faces having a general impression of all of them there. Whether they're still alive or not, flood them with peace, send them goodwill. May you all be well and happy. The light going out in front of you to the difficult person, 
also goes out to all of the difficult people in your life, past and present, anyone who has harmed you, harmed someone you love, or harmed something that you value. Flood them with light. Send them peace. Seeing some of their faces, faces you'd rather not see. Allow loving kindness to make you brave and steady. Wish them well. All these difficult people, may you all be well, may you all be happy. And the light going out in all four directions evenly stretches even further out to all strangers, to this whole country. stretching out further to all the surrounding areas, countries we consider allies, countries we consider enemies, countries we don't consider, light going out evenly in all directions until it covers the whole earth, flooding this whole planet with life, light, and goodwill Sending peace to areas of conflict. Sending soothing peace to areas of famine or natural disasters. Sending peace with wisdom to places with abundance. And as you cover the planet with light, sending loving kindness to all people, also including all animals, all beings with life. Recognizing the interconnectedness and bringing love to that interconnectedness. And as you send out the light of loving kindness from your heart in all directions, if it feels comfortable, you can add the mantra of compassion and wisdom. Om Mani Padme Hum 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 Om Mani Padme
Padmevum, Om Mani Padmevum, Om Mani Padmevum, Om Mani Padmevum, Om Mani Padmevum. And think, may all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings never be separated from the happiness that is without suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from hatred, attachment, and indifference. And you can relax your attention. So um, that, that meditation always takes longer than I thought. So um, <laughs> um, if you would like to ask any questions or bring any comments for the last couple of minutes, we can do that. Um, how did it go? Just, I wanted to thank you for opening my heart. <laughs> Glad it worked. <laughs> Glad it worked. Yeah, it's a really um, one of my favorite meditations. Yeah. yeah any, anybody have any um, questions if you wanted to walk yourself through it and do it by yourself um, the stages are clear enough I'm guessing yeah you start with your mom then your dad then your dear one then your enemy and then they represent everyone and then out and out and out and you can spend as much time with each section as you need to in order for your heart to kind of like give in you know, because some categories, the heart opens more easily than others, right? So however long it takes for you to kind of go, yeah, okay, <laughs> and to open out. And, um, you know, the basis of these ideas is that it's very easy to have loving kindness when there is affinity. And so what are the ways to walk yourself back into affinity with other sentient beings and to remember the sameness of all of us? Because then it's much easier for the heart to open. Yeah, so you use the people that you know in order to trigger that self-knowledge, you know, because you know them, you, you know what drives them. And so the heart can kind of relax back open when you think about these people so close to you and then it's easier to then expand that to others who might be more abstract um, so anyway any questions or thoughts um, or resistance is okay too if you had some resistance first thank you for a beautiful uh, meditation really something to improve um, i had some difficulty with when you dealing with the enemy and then you say it's better it will not exist at all or something like this and it's quite hard to say that um, i wish it will not be existing and then, so it was a bit hard I, yeah you maybe misunderstand i didn't say that the that some that, that um I didn't say that we, we don't want them to exist. I, I, I'm saying when you're thinking of the enemy, right. think of someone that you would rather isn't there. Yeah. Yes, but it was hard because uh, usually our enemy, uh, any kind, it's very hard to find. Um, 
that brought also good things. So it's kind, it's hard to say that we want would not uh, like to um, have to be in our life. This is all. So I have you, some. You're lucky to not have someone that pops up <laughs> easily. You're lucky. Um, but no, when you know, once we're sort of grown up and over a lot of the big, I don't know conflicts and dramas that got us here. Um, it might be that there's people that are difficult, but we would never call them enemies. And you see all sides of them, just as you say. What we're trying to do is to acknowledge the presence of aversion. There is a version that comes up within us. And when there is a version, our heart shuts down. And that gives us suffering and it makes us unskillful towards others. So it, it seems a little bit too simplistic to say this person is my enemy. But if you can think of this person is difficult for me because of me and my mind, they're not difficult from their own side. They're not an inherently difficult person. Some people find them lovely, um, but I am finding them difficult. And that is making my heart shut down. And I need to acknowledge that. Otherwise, I'm going to have uneven loving kindness and um, at the cost of my spiritual path. So, so it's important to acknowledge that there are some people you prefer were less frequent in your life, okay. even if you can see their good side, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. so it's not saying that they don't have a good side, of course they do. It's more just acknowledging your own kind of stuff that comes up when there's people that you've branded as, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Better, yeah. thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And some people find that one challenging because they have actual enemies, you know, someone killed their parents or, you know, someone raped them or someone, whatever. It's a really strong trauma. And so for, for that's also something that um, can bring up a really normal, um, normal resistance, right? But in um, kind of mentally blocking those hard people from our mind, you know, or kind of pushing away, that actually adds a stress to our heart, you know? Never mind what it does for them, of course, that has an impact on them too, but for our own heart, not being able to relax into loving kindness harms us. And when you're in loving kindness atmosphere, inner atmosphere of loving kindness, you are relaxed and you are happy and you give your joy back to yourself. So it's, it's in our own best interest to live in this way, as well as it makes us a lot more functional and positive for society and all sentient beings. So it's win-win, it's but it's, it's difficult when your emotions are, you know, reactive, <laughs> as you all know from your work, right? Thank yeah, you. it's tricky. So gently, gently, don't force anything. Um, if, if you're doing this meditation and the hardest person in your life is too hard, pick someone less hard to be your representative mm -hmm. of difficult people. You know, just like the guy that annoys you at work as opposed to like the person that did all sorts of horrible things to you. You know, just pick like an annoying person and then gradually you can bring in the harder and harder people. Yeah, um, and you know, and sometimes people don't stay put in their categories, do they? You know, here's your female relatives and your male relatives and your closest one and your difficult one. And then they leak into ca different categories, don't they? Sometimes one of your relatives is the closest one to you. Sometimes one of your relatives becomes your enemy. You know, it's all kind of complicated. But um, by doing this exercise of naming that categorization exists, that bias exists, um, we can have much more unconditional love by first acknowledging that we don't have unconditional love. Yeah, you have to name it first. You can't jump over it. So by naming it, then you let go of it and the kind of boundaries dissolve. So it's just worth an experiment. Um, yeah, any, any other questions or thoughts? Thank you very much, Yontan. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you next week, Yontan. See you. <laughs> Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.